How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant. This is part 24. Making and fitting the fire grate. The first thing I had to do was go up to Black Gates and buy some parts. While I was there, I bought a shovel and a firing iron on some Loctite 603 because I'd run out of it. But the main thing I went up to Black Gates for was to buy some of this stainless steel fire grate material. It's really good stuff. I'll take this opportunity to show you this shovel that I bought from Black Gates. It's the smallest one that they had, and it only just fits in the fire hole door. This fire hole door is quite small. So the solution to make the shovel smaller was to just squeeze it gently in the vise, and now it fits much better. It will allow me to distribute the coal to any part of the firebox. Not that the firebox is very big to start with. But before I can coal fire this boiler, it does of course need a fire grate. So once again I'm removing the fire hole door assembly and this clip shows the boiler removed from the main base and on its side and I'm currently measuring the diameter of the inner firebox. So I need to set the compasses to half that and half of two and three quarters is one and three eighths just for anyone who's not into fractions. With this superb pair of compasses I bought in a junk shop for only one pound and that was for two of them. I'm drawing a circle on the piece of plywood. What I'm doing in this clip is just cutting out the piece of plywood on my bandsaw. And you will notice that the piece of plywood is not the same size as the hole. This is not due to incompetence or incontinence, and yes, I know where the pads are available from. Sorry, that was a comment that someone left me last week and it just made me laugh. But I will try and be more sensible in future. The reason that I cut the piece of plywood slightly smaller is that any part of the grate that fits in the inside of the firebox must not touch the side of the firebox. This is very important. You do need to leave a bit of clearance. Owing to the position of the support rails on this piece of grating, it was impossible to make it fit inside the inner firebox. So I decided to go with plan B. The idea was to cut the piece of grating to shape, slightly bend out the outer piece of grating to sit on the corners of the vertical columns. And this appeared to work. The piece of fire grate was a good fit on the corners of the upright columns. But there were a couple of problems. One was fitting and withdrawing the grate was a real problem because of these cross supports. And I think the other problem was obvious. This looks like one of those purple minions from the film Despicable Me 2. So I can't really have that in a model steam boiler that started off looking like something from a temple. Then I thought, ah, I have a solution. So I went back to the bandsaw and cut the ends of the fire bars shorter so you couldn't see them. And for a short moment in time, I thought, that's the solution. That looks okay. The fire bars are in place. They're not going to fall down into the ash pan. Yes, I think that will be fine. So I'll just try the boiler in place and everything looks good. I'll just put the fire hole door in place and it doesn't fit because the fire bars are lifting the grate slightly too high. And the other problem, of course, is the removal of the grate means that I have to lift the boiler, and I can't really do that when it's all plumbed in. So I cut off one of the fire bars, shortened the grate from end to end, and cleaned it up on the linisher. And now the grate slides in and out perfectly, but there's nothing to support it so it falls into the ash pan, in which case I would have to make a support that goes down into the ash pan and supports the grate. I really didn't want any kind of external support coming up from the ash pan to hold the grate in place because there's little enough room in the ash pan as it is and drilling holes in the foundation ring of the boiler to support the grate was out of the question. So I measured the gap between the two vertical columns and I found a piece of stainless steel which I then cut on the bandsaw to fit between the vertical columns. If anything this piece of stainless steel plate was slightly on the thin side but I think it'll be okay for this boiler because the fire in this boiler is not going to be as hot as the one in a model locomotive. Anyway, once I'd cleaned up the piece of stainless steel, it fitted perfectly between the vertical columns, both at the front and the rear of the boiler, so whilst it was in position, I marked it with a felt-tip pen. And then I removed the plate from the boiler, and here you see it before I cut it on the bandsaw, and now it looks like this. As I cut one side, I realised that I didn't want this plate to be a perfect fit underneath the boiler, I wanted part of it, the front part, to be able to stick out about a quarter of an inch. There's a reason for this, and I'll show the reason for this near the end of the video. So now I have a stainless steel plate that is a good fit between the uprights, 
and sits very comfortably on the square part. And in this clip, I'm drawing round a piece of plywood that I originally cut, which don't forget is slightly undersized. But as you can see by the clip, I'm holding the pen perfectly vertical. The external diameter of this black line is equal to the internal diameter of the inner firebox. And the next part of the job is to set the metal plate accurately in the four jaw chuck on the rotary table. And in this clip, I'm just double checking the accuracy by rotating the rotary table whilst using a center drill to scribe a line. And now I'm using the center drill for its intended purpose, which is to make little center points on the work. And at this stage, I'm not drilling all the way through because I really do not want to accidentally drill any holes in my four jaw chuck jaws. So after I've drilled the outer set of holes, I repositioned the milling table and started again on the next set and so forth. Once I spotted all the holes with the center drill where I wanted them, it was time to use a twist drill to drill them all the way through. A tip when drilling stainless steel, keep the drill moving, don't dither, don't hesitate. If you hesitate, then the drill will rub, the stainless steel will work harden, and then you won't drill it without blunting the drill. I managed to not break any drills doing this, nor did I manage to blunt any, because I'm quite used to drilling stainless steel, and you really have to push the drill through the work. For the outer ring of holes, I initially used a 3 16th of an inch diameter twist drill, but as I worked my way inwards, I used progressively smaller drills, because as I worked towards the centre of the piece of metal, the holes became closer together. It's worth mentioning that with the outer two sets of holes, as I was putting a lot of pressure on the work to push the drill through the stainless steel, the stainless steel plate was getting slightly concave. So for the centre three sets of holes, I turned the plate over and that equalised it so it became flat again. What I'm doing at the moment is just deburring the holes. And once the holes were deburred, I just used some coarse sandpaper to clean up the plate. Time now to try it in position. This has to work. And so far so good. The plate fits very well. And more importantly, it's very easy to fit the plate and remove it without disturbing any part of the boiler. And it will be the same principle when I make the gas burner. I'll make it very easy to fit and remove. It will just sit in the bottom of the ash pan. But for now, back to the fire grate. Here it is. And as you can see, it slides in just like putting a card into a card machine. The fire holder fits the boiler perfectly and it's not touching the top support ring. So everything looks good. And the best part of the design, if you can call it a design, because it's really just a prototype, so I'm making it up as I go along, is that you can remove the fire grate when the boiler is in steam, should you run low on water. Just by pulling this plate out, all the ashes drop into the ash pan, you can rake them out and kill the fire instantly. Now that is a good idea. In this clip, you may be wondering what I'm doing. I'm just using a letter punch, it's the letter V as an arrow, to show which way this fits in, because it's slightly tighter at the back to stop it from going all the way through. And now the boiler is nearing completion, I think the next job is to connect up the water pump and give it a test steaming. But that will have to be on another day, because the weather's not so good today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.